Okay, we're back uh, where we left off of the first video, and we were looking at this picture where we determined that uh, based on our vectors u and v here, we could take uh, multiples of each one of those and add them together to produce any vector in the plane. So any vector in R2, or the plane, can be written in the form c times u plus d times v for some values of c and d. Um, let's look at that analytically now. Okay, so according to our graphical argument, this system is consistent for every b in R2. You can take some multiple of u, some multiple of v, add them together, and get any vector in R2. So if we break that down, um, we can uh, multiply c times u. This is u. This is v. Here's our generic right-hand side vector. We multiply through by the scalars. We end up with this. And then adding these two together gives us this matrix here. Now, what does it mean for two vectors to be equal? Well, it means that component-wise they're equal. Okay, so the first component here is equal to the first component here. And likewise, the second component. So what we have is a system of equations. 2c plus d equals b1. c plus 4d equals b2. So we can put that in an augmented matrix. And that's what I've got here. And notice that, again, according to our graphical argument, our picture that we looked at, um, this... Uh, system corresponding to this augmented matrix is consistent no matter what B1 and B2 are. And also notice that these are equivalent. Okay, So when we have a multiple of a vector plus uh, another multiple of a vector then uh, equals some right hand side vector, notice how this system relates to this augmented matrix. So the first vector here just goes in the first column second vector goes in the second column and the right hand side is just in the right hand side column. So these are equivalent. Okay, let's look at this system a little more closely. Um, I, I swapped rows to uh, make the arithmetic a little easier to get the one and the pivot position here. And we can do a row operation to zero out underneath and we end up with this matrix. Now remember this has a solution no matter what the right hand side is. Okay, now how do we know that that's the case? Uh, we know it graphically, but how can we look at this augmented matrix and tell that? Well, notice that there's no way to have a row of this form, the 0, 0, something not 0 uh, form. And that's because in each row we have a pivot position. We have a pivot position here, so that's never going to be 0. We have a pivot position here, so that's never going to be 0. So there's no way to have a row of this form here. Okay, so the bottom line is that your system will be consistent no matter what the right hand side is if you have a pivot position in every row of the coefficient matrix. Okay, and we're, and we're talking about the coefficient matrix because I'm talking about just this part here, not looking at the right hand side. You don't want your right hand side to be a uh, to have a pivot position because then that would indicate the system's inconsistent. All right, let's uh, kind of take what we've looked at so far and put it in the terminology um, of uh, the uh, text. Okay, so um, if we start off with a, an arbitrary set of vectors v1 through vp and scalars c1 through cp, then if we if we apply the scalars to the vectors and add them up and that's what we were doing earlier we only had two vectors but here we got an arbitrary number of vectors okay, this is called a linear combination of the V's with weights C1 through CP okay so um, this these when we've been multiplying by a scalar and adding vectors together that we were taking linear combinations Okay, so a linear combination just looks like this. You've got a scalar multiplied times a vector, um, and you have that uh, for however many vectors you have, and then you add them all up. That's what a linear combination is. 
Okay, so we were doing c times u plus d times v. That was a linear combination of u and v, where c and d were the weights we were using. Okay, now here's a linear combination. Okay, but here the x's are being the weights and the a's are vectors. Okay, so this is uh, x1, a1, plus x2, a2, and so forth. Um, oh, that should be x n, a n. And uh, that has the same solution set as uh, the system given by this augmented matrix. Now, if you remember before, we started off with an equation like this. We just had two vectors. But um, then when we got it into matrix form, remember I showed you, you take your first vector here. It goes in the first column in the augmented matrix. Second vector goes in the second column and so forth. Last vector goes in the last column, and then you got your right-hand side. Um, here we see that uh, you've got uh, u ended up uh, c times u plus d times v, and uh, we ended up with that augmented matrix that we saw earlier. Okay, uh, one more term, and I used this in the previous uh, video, but uh, we'll. Uh, define it more formally here. The set of all linear combinations of the set of vectors v1 through vp in Rn is denoted by the span of v1 through vp. Okay, so set of all linear combinations of vectors is the span of that set of vectors. Okay, and the span of that set of vectors is, is just uh, called the subset that is spanned or generated by those vectors. So if you recall back um, when we were looking at our example, um, we, uh, I talked about how you could span my two vectors, u and v, that we had, they spanned r2. We're going to look at that in just a sec. Um, here's another way of looking at it. The span of v1 through vp is all vectors that can be written in this form. What is this form? It's just linear combinations. Okay, so the span is just the set of all linear combinations of those vectors. And here's the previous example. Um, we've got C times, this is U plus D times V equals B1, B2. Okay, so that means that these vectors span R2. Uh, let's back up just a little bit. What, what if we just looked at the span of a single vector, what would we get there? Well, back to the definition, all linear combinations of that vector, and linear combinations of just one vector means just all multiples of that vector. And so graphically, what that is is just the line that goes through the origin and uh, that vector. So it's just all multiples of u. So anything on this line. Uh, here's another thing to think about. Um, the span of the vector 2, 1 is the same as the span of this set of vectors. Now, why would that be? Well, here's definition. A span of 2, 1 is just all multiples of 2, 1. Span of the two of them is all linear combinations of the two. Now, why would these two sets be the same? Well, the key is to notice that 4, 2 is a multiple of 2, 1. So it really doesn't add anything because you can take a multiple of 2, 1 to get 4, 2. So by adding 4, 2 to the set, as I did here, it doesn't get you any more vectors. Okay. And so you have to move off that line defined by the vector 2, 1 uh, to generate uh, more vectors. And that's... In our example before, we had two uh, vectors that were not collinear. And so in that case, you could generate or span all of R2. Okay, let's, let's look a little bit in, uh, at a three-dimensional example. So if we look at the span of this vector, uh, that would just be all multiples of that vector. And graphically... Um, we're saying that's, that x has to be 0, z has to be 0, 
but y could be anything because you can multiply anything by one. So essentially you're on uh, the y-axis. All right, so x has to be zero, z has to be zero, so anything along the y-axis. If we add another vector to it, so I throw in this one, now we take all linear combinations of these two and notice that in this case you get all vectors that look like this. So it means x has to be zero, but y and z can be anything we want them to be. And so that gives us a plane, okay, where x is zero, but y and z are anything that, that we want them to be. Okay, so these two vectors in R3 generate a plane.